Hey everyone, back again, um, doing another video here for uh, mold making. Um, today we're going to do uh, uh, something that's uh, really fun and exciting is different shaped tiles. So what we have here is a fish here that's found in Norway called a ballin, a ballin rassi. And it's, uh, it's a really colorful fish that uh, I don't know much about it yet, um, but it's just truly colorful and uh, you know, it looks like they, they get to be you know, um, a couple couple kilos to uh, 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 kilograms to you know maybe maybe twenty or thirty kilograms. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly, but they they vary uh, greatly in color. And but um, I'm doing this one because a friend of mine caught one of these, and uh, so it's uh, another fish I can add to my collection. And I had, I had a fr I had a really nice good picture of it, freshly caught. So I was able to connect with this fish. So one thing about tile making is that, is that if you're going to be successful, you've got to be a woodworker. You're going to go broke if you have people making frames for you all the time and, and uh, not doing it yourself. So I just put together this, this new frame. It's really fun, too, to be able to put together these new frames because then you get a whole collection of different size frames to make molds with, and then you can hang them up on your wall and you look really professional with a whole bunch of frames up there, you know what I mean? You look like you know what you're doing. So, again, we, we do the same thing here. Even though we have the larger mold, even though we have the larger uh, frame, excuse me, we're doing the same thing, uh, we have to with, uh, stick it down on the corners. I gotta find a better place to put this camera today. Can't see me talk. Ah. Put it in a bucket of screws. It's a little better. So. Yeah, squish it down. Then we're gonna do what we did yesterday and just pack it into the edges here. Today I let the, I let the clay soak in water overnight so it's really nice and sloppy and easily easy to pack it in these edges. So my, my, my goal is to have about, I don't know, you know, lots and lots of, of, the, of the fish here that are found in, Nor in Norway. Um, and then I want to create a really awesome fish wall here. Freshwater, saltwater fish. Um, not as many freshwater fish, of course, but um, it's going to be a really amazing uh, gallery when it's all set up. Almost have it here. My battery's running really low on this camera, so let's, if it cuts out, well, it cuts out. But um, we'll have a lot of this video recorded. I mean, I'm in Oda, Norway, right now. Um, it's raining out. It's uh, October, like 17th. <clears throat> uh, first ice pellets, kind of last night. As I was going to bed, I'm going to get some water really quick and we're going to pour this.
back. So there's really not much more you need to know about making these larger molds that I really am concerned that you aren't, didn't learn from my other mold making uh, videos. Really the biggest thing is the larger the mold, the more plaster you're going to need. And when you pour the plaster, the more, the more um, liquid you have up against the wood, the more buoyant the wood becomes and the more it wants to pull up. And then you can have a big plaster can spill out. But that really is not, have, I've never had huge problems with that. Um, guess what happens once you learn. Okay. So again, I'm mixing the, mixing the plaster. That's pretty good. And then a little bit more. All right, we're ready to pour this. Ball and Rassel. Rassi. So I'm going to splash a little water in, the, in these holes here in its face and pail. Uh, there we are. You know, ideally, it's nice to pour the plaster on the edge of the tile and let it kind of flood over the surface. Um, that way, you get a more smooth coating. Looks like I have just enough plaster. Uh, if the if the tile is any if the plaster mold is any bigger than this, you want to you're going to want to make it thicker um, because then you can have some problems when you're pressing the tile. Uh, it's, if it's so big and thin like this, it can break the mold can. So um, you also want to make sure you have your clay is nice and extra soft. So there we go folks, the Ballin Rassi has been poured. Exciting. That tile I carved back in July sometime, it's been transported from my house to the Dunkelager. Then upstairs, I think it went downstairs once, it was sitting down here when I was power washing, big mess. Um, dripping water, it survived, unscathed, and here we are, and it will be going up on the wall very soon in the new gallery.